Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Hang out this nerd. Nerdarchy is dead. In this GM 911, this ranger gets up to animal antics. The rest of the players are not amused. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. Get weekly gaming tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. As always, down in the description, you can find the original GM911, as well as if you have one of your own, you'd like to send it to us, nerdarchy at gmail.com, GM911 in the subject line. So Clayton has reached out to us and he says, help me, Nerdarchy. I've got a player who wants to be Dar the Beastmaster, have a horde of animal companions, and both he and the other players think that this guy has got planned to push everyone else to the background, and all of his animals are going to wind up fulfilling all the party roles. He's going to be the, the solo main character, and everybody else is going to just be useless in the background. Probably. You all just stay home. No, I mean, I don't even know how you could even think that's going to happen. Well, I mean, there's other problems I could see happening, but those are not it. So, like, if you actually look at the Beastmaster movies or TV show or what have you, those specific animals had the ability to pickpocket and, you know, scare off normal folk and what have you. Yeah, if you've got yourself a tiger or a bear and you're not up against any kind of competent foes, it's very easy for one person and his horde of animals to win the day. But you have to remember, in those specific instances, this is a story that's being written to highlight him and those companions. When you're setting forth as the DM, writing an adventure for a party, those animals are going to wind up being targets. And you have, whether it be a monkey or a weasel or what have you that you want as your pickpocket, that thing's going to get one-shotted and that thing's going to be dead. Yeah, I mean, even a bear, which is a relatively tough combatant, a group of orcs might see a rug and stakes. You know, so that that's the thing. Like, very quickly, these animals will be outstripped by the players only at the level lowest of levels could this even happen and if it does how did that happen gm like why does he have all the animals to start i wouldn't allow that i'd be like yeah, you can find them through your adventuring you know maybe you could start off with a mastiff if you wanted to because that's on the you know some of the things that are actually on the player's handbook equipment list like right. for those animals you can buy and stuff like that sure if it's not too exotic and not too expensive you want to start with it no problem do you have a way to train it you know, did you, are you going to spend extra gold to see that they are trained? You know, there's things of this nature. Are you going to have a good handle animal check to make it do things that are against its nature? That's another thing of having them be able to, to do things. You don't have the ability to communicate. Yes, as a ranger, you eventually get spells and you have the ability to cast animal friendship and speak with animals, but they are still animals. How can you explain, oh, I want you to go up to that window, open it up just a crack, slip in, grab the coin purse, and come on back out. That's not something that something with a two or a three intelligence is going to be able to follow. You got attack, you got flee, fetch. you know, fetch. Like, it takes a long time to train an animal to do something. Let's face it, first through third level adventurers are not going to be Dar the Beastmaster. Right, you know, he's more like a sixth to tenth level character. Character, really so you have to work your way up to that you're gonna have limited resources so this isn't really a problem and here's the other thing like i wouldn't say you need to say no you can't do this it's within reasons so yes but you have to have enough resources to do it you have to find the animals you have to train the animals so you're gonna to have to go through these steps in our campaigns we've always had people that like to play the pokemon character right my son does it all the time he doesn't necessarily want to use the creatures in combat or anything like that because he doesn't want anything to happen to them and if that's what they're looking for if they are looking for the well i want to have pets i want to have friends just because well then that's great let them have the friends by acquiring them through gameplay each one winds up being a player reward a character reward in and of itself and then if they don't do anything he just has them yay great he's got some friends to talk to and roll around in the in the grass and players happy great now in my games if you use any kind of companion it's a target Right? Whatever it does can be done to it. And even if you're talking about like the monkey or the ferret and you just want it to pick pockets, well, there's always that chance that it gets a bad roll or it goes up against someone that's very perceptive and they could capture it. They can kill it, like you said. They could harm it. They, you know, there's a lot of things that could happen. But at the end of the day, you know, a monkey has one hit point and it may have, you know, it's how great is its check to sleight of hand? How, how great is that going to be? 
Now, if you've got one that's exceptional, it might have a little bit more hit points and it might have a slightly better check, but like, what does that take? It goes back to what you were saying about the thing needing to be trained, which requires downtime, requires effort and what have you. That's not... And moolah, probably. <laughs> Well, you gotta you gotta be able to buy space to train it because you can't just be like, oh well, let's just wander through town and try to pickpocket people. That's not gonna go over too well. You're gonna have to expend some resources in some way or another, and then there's other problems. You're walking around with bear. Well, the guards might be like, you can't bring your bear in town or your tiger or whatever you have. So you know, so that could be a problem. And like you know, maybe you, maybe it disappears while it's out in the woods and you have to find it. I'm not saying like you should just you should target it, but maybe it becomes an adventure. Be like, what happened to it? Oh, find some dry blood or something like that so it could become an adventure hook as well and if you are using these things in combat eventually the thing is going to get dropped it's going to be a drain on everyone's resources a ranger only gets so many spells so animals have low armor classes which means they're going to take a lot of hits monsters are going to hit it almost all the time that means you're going to have to rely on your cleric to heal your animal companions and you is that going to happen you know I, or is it going to constantly be down when it is dropped and stabilized or it drops in a dies that's a significant investiture that that's gone now you got to redo it you got to find a new animal you got to retrain it is the party going to wait around while you do that or are they going to move on to the next adventure and if you keep going through too many animals is the place where you usually pick them up at and be like i don't know man this is the third bear in as many months i, I don't know I feel a little. I feel a little guilty now. <laughs> Maybe we can find a nice, nice circus to sell this bear to instead. These are all going to be considerations, and at the end of the day, too, like just talk to your player, ask them, like, what do you want to use this for? What is your plan? What is your intent? I know Scott Garvey was talking about playing in a Pathfinder game with his daughter, and she just wanted to have a pet wolf. And the GM is like, no way, no how, this can't be, you know. And it's like he's like, she just wanted to have a pet wolf. Why can't she have just have a pet wolf? There's certain things that players are going to want in the game and if it's not a big deal like a pet wolf why not put it in there you know and then de depending on how they use it will determine how you react as the gm it, you know is it a resource that they're constantly tapping into well if it is then it's fair game it's also a resource you can deplete and you might completely deplete it as well what about some other kind of like interesting consequences you could have like some kind of fey mark or wilderness mark that your character acquires if he's you know sent a lot of animals to their death you know maybe there's kind of like a shade or a shroud that hangs around that character now in essence he's kind of cursed and and other animals just know and they stay away from him. You could, you know, look at this and not consider it a problem, but like it is it is what it is. You use it as a blessing. The player wants this. As Dave says, have that conversation, figure out the direction he wants to go or she wants to go and roll with it. As a DM, no, I'm not going to allow you to have a horde of animals at starting character. Even if you're third level, it's just it's not feasible. You're going to have to build up to it. You build up to it. Then as Dave says, as you're going to see how they, how they use it, if they're exploiting what they have, well, then you're going to bring it down. I don't care whether it's an animal. I don't care whether it's a hireling. I don't care whether it's an apprentice. You start using it in combat. I'm going to consider that a viable target. In the game that I'm running, you talked about, you know, your, your son having pets. His pets didn't do anything in combat. NPCs traveled with the party. They didn't do anything in combat. They were safe. Area effect spells didn't go anywhere near them. It, it was never targeted by an enemy because I don't feel the need to do that. Another character had actual multiple apprentices, had a hireling. They went into combat. They were targeted. All of them were, you know, dropped at one point in time or another. They were affected by the choice of the player. And that's ultimately what it is. And as far as like filling, this player might be able to use a bunch of animals and fill all the party roles, right? But he's going to fill them badly. <laughs> Your rogue is not going to do worse than a monkey. The rogue's skills keep increasing. The proficiency modifier keeps going up. They're just going to be the menagerie is going to be inferior to any player character they'd be better off trying to assist the rogue than they would be doing the action themselves so i don't even think that's something to worry about and it depends upon the level of threat of the game what's the dc for the things that you're putting out there if you make it so that the animal that's only going to get the plus two proficiency bonus from the ranger like that's not that's not a whole lot to work with well they're not even going to get that unless they're actually skilled unless they're actually skilled you know and it's a beast master companion then it'll be better but that's a big resource and, to spend and you get one yeah you, get, you, know, you, you don't get the menagerie as your beast companion this is like to me isn't much of an issue talk it out with your player and then see if you guys can meet 
meet in the middle and have fun with it. Your other players have nothing to worry about. Like, you're a really piss poor rogue if the monkey is out roguing you. Then you deserve to be have your spotlight stolen by the monkey. Your, your, cler <laughs> your cleric is going to be a much better cleric than the ranger. Because the ranger is the only possible way to, one to, to fill the healer role. And the bear is not going to outfight the fighter. Maybe at first level, but then, like, why are you giving this to the character at first level? There's a bigger issue there. So I don't think it's a problem. Talk to your players. Guys, hash it out. Find a way for everyone to have fun at the table. What do you guys think? Let us know. We have a place for it. It's called The Comments. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.